All right, welcome back, my friends. Um, this is part two of Provinces of Indonesia Explained by Geography Now. Hopefully, you've watched part one. If you haven't watched it, please watch it. After you watch this, I'll put a card at the end and a link in the description. Um, we've gone about halfway through, and now we're on the island of Borneo here with Malaysia and Brunei sharing this island and here we go Selor, but the largest city is Tarakan, largest ethnic group, the Malays and the Dayaks. They border Malaysia and even have an island that's split in half with Malaysia, Sebati wow. Island. So this place is kind of known for having a little bit of drama that happened in the 60s. Uh -oh. Basically, this area was under the Bulungan Sultanate, which had close ties to Malaysia, which made things complicated during the Indonesia-Malaysia confrontation years. Long story oh. short, lots of the royal house members or the aristocrats were either captured or killed or they exiled to Malaysia. And today, some of the surviving members have announced that they're actually returning to Indonesia in the process of getting Indonesian citizenship. So to conclude, it's kind of like the complicated sibling of Kalimantan. And now we move on to the Nusa Tenggara or Nusa Lesser Sunda Tenggara. Island. Although small, this is the most popular region in Indonesia to outsiders and it all has to do with really only one island and you know what it is. Bali! Bali. Capital, Denpasar, largest ethnic group, the Balinese. Bali is not a country, it is a province of Indonesia and the third smallest province after Jakarta and Yogyakarta. It is the only Hindu majority province in Indonesia. However, unlike Hinduism in India or Nepal, Balinese Hindus usually do not adhere to strict vegetarian customs all the time. Like other ethnic groups, Balinese people have their own language and script. <laughs> Basically, when Islam came in during the Hindu Majapahit Empire, the Balinese split off with their cousins, the Tengarese people on Java, and they crossed the strait into Bali, which was kind of seen as like a safe haven for Hindus. Fast forward a bunch of centuries and uh, word spread and somehow it became a super popular their tourist hotspot for Australians and Europeans and even some Americans jump in on it. They have a lot of overcrowding issues now and it's uh. like, come on guys, there's a lot more you can check out in Indonesia, like literally the province next door. But for what it's worth, chill, relaxed culture, five-star hotels, you get the deal. Bali. West Nusa Tenggara. Capital, Mataram. Largest ethnic group, the Sasak people. Sasak. This province consists of two major islands, Lombok and Sumbawa. Many of you guys, my Indonesian subscribers, have described Lombok as the Muslim version of Bali. It offers the exact same level of ecotourism and tropical resort stuff, even some cool ancient temples like this one. Lombok is known as the tobacco producing island, while Sumbawa is like the money maker of this province with cattle and gold mines. This is why Sumbaya has also kind of expressed the desire to possibly create their own province since they feel like they provide more economically yet the capital is on the western side of Lombok but anyway other than that Bali but just more Muslimy. East Nusa Tenggara capital Kupang largest ethnic group the Antoni slash Dawan Antoni and uh, for this one let's go to one of our Indonesian oh here we go I like this is Indonesia's southernmost province. It is the only province in Indonesia where Catholics are the majority with about 54% of the total population. And the island of Timor, one of the main islands, share a land border with the country of Timor, which separated from Indonesia in 2002. The iconic Komodo dragon, the world's largest living lizard, are a highlight of the province. They mostly live in Rinca and Komodo Island. East Nusa Tenggara exhibits a subtle Melanesian influence in its culture and people as it gets closer to the geographic Melanesia. As one of the driest part of Indonesia, many islands feature semi-arid terrain, adding a unique touch to the province's diverse environment. Thank you. And now the Sulawesi region. Yeah, no, got loud again. An alien shaped island with four arms. This is where you also find the Wallace line, which is an imaginary line that naturalists notice that the flora and fauna changes drastically, like the plants and animals are more closely related to the ones in yeah. Australia than Asia over here. I actually heard about this line in, uh, when I was doing my wildlife studies in university. And it, it's, it's very interesting how much wildlife changes just in between those islands that are so close together. It's quite amazing. Here. West Sulawesi, capital, Mamuju, largest ethnic group, the Mandar peoples. Basically, this is the only province without a long arm peninsula, and it split off in 2004. It's the home of the Mandar people, and uh, it has been trying to make itself more popular since independence. They built the, the scenic walkway and the capital, and well, it's kind of cool. Hollywood style sign on a hill. They, a lot of cool history here, too. They have a bunch of archaeological sites and traditional houses you can see in the rural area. Wow, that's Overall, pretty house. It's like Sulawesi's newer tribe. 
trying hard to stick out young sibling. South Sulawesi, capital Makassar, largest ethnic group, the Buganese or the Bugis and the Makassarese people. So the predominant ethnic group here, the Buganese or the Bugis people are well known throughout Indonesia. Bugis. Historically, they were known for being the best sailors going as far as Australia to trade long before Europeans even knew what Australia was. And many notable politicians in Indonesia have been Bugis. Nonetheless, the most famous group of people that put this province on the map are probably the Toraja people. They have that really weird death ritual thing. You've probably seen pictures or videos of it in documentaries. They put the caskets up in, in the open area. Southeast yeah. Sulawesi, capital Kendari, largest ethnic group, the Tolaki and the Butonese. So to summarize, this place was once part of the Buton Sultanate, which is where the second largest ethnic group, the Butonese people uh, get their name from. And the people were known as the blacksmith people because it was noticed that a lot of people here were using iron tools. Otherwise, <laughs> it's kind of difficult to get here by road because there's only like one small road in and out wow. from the surrounding provinces. Most people actually just prefer to arrive by ferry. And finally, they have the largest castle in the world area wise. Central Sulawesi, capital Palu. Well, when we say a bigger picture of it. And the Buganese people. This is Tulum. the heart of Sulawesi with the widest range of ethnic groups, home to so many historical kingdoms. Also, this place has some of the best Neolithic historical sites, wow. like these megalith granite stone structures, ancient cave drawings. Other Otherwise, this place has been a huge coffee and mining hub. Recently, lots of nickel deposits have been discovered here and it boosted their industrial prospects. Gorontalo, capital, Gorontalo, largest ethnic group, Gorontaloan. This is an interesting one. You'll notice it's the only province in Sulawesi that doesn't have the name Sulawesi attached to it. It's the birthplace of who is considered one of the brightest uh -huh. Indonesians ever to have lived, former president of Indonesia, Mr. Habibi, who is also the father of Indonesia's aeronautics industry. Gorontalo people used to have their own sultanate. You can see the ruins of it in these areas. They have their own unique customs and cuisines like binte bilu huta. What is like that? Sweet corn porridge with shrimp and seasonings. Yeah, kind of like shrimp and grits in the U.S. Like shrimp and North grits, yeah. Sulawesi, capital Manado, largest ethnic group, the Minahasan. This place was historically a huge hub for spices, rice, and gold in the past, which made it a huge point of interest from outsiders like the Portuguese, Dutch, Spanish, Chinese, and domestic kingdoms. Today, the commerce spirit is still alive and they are famous for having some of the most extreme markets that sell jungle bushmeat. It has a population that is about 70% Christian, mostly Protestant, and the largest ethnic group, the Mina Hassan people, have their famous uh, kabasaran, which is like a traditional martial art and <clears throat> war dance, and it includes wow, red that'd be something. feathered headdresses and weapons. It is also the province with the only synagogue in Indonesia, as they host a small community of just a few couple hundred Sephardic Jewish people, mostly originating from Spain and Portugal. Oh, now they we get reach there? the Maluku Islands, known as the Spice islands. These islands are kind of like the bridge between Asia and Oceania. Everything starts to kind of blend and you start to see a lot more Austronesian with a semi-Melanesian touch to it here. The first one, Maluku. Capital Ambon, largest ethnic group, the Malukans. Basically, this is the site where Europeans recorded their first interaction with the Indonesian islands. Home to the super small Banda Archipelago, which historically was at one point the only producer of nutmeg in the entire world. And despite this province having small land area, they have the largest domain of ocean territory out of all the provinces. Ambon is known as the city of music because a lot of famous Indonesian singers come from here. Historically, <coughs> Malukans were kind of known for being hired as like the debt collectors throughout Indonesia. And in the past, they were usually the ones that worked most closely with the Dutch, which is why today most people of Indonesian descent in the Netherlands have roots from the Malukan Islands. Most Malukans are mixed between many ethnic groups, including Arabs, Europeans, and Melanesians. So there's a lot of mixed people here. North Maluku, capital Sofifi, but the largest city is Ternate. As for the largest ethnic group, there is no one ethnic group that dominates. There are 28 known groups here. 28. The one with the largest population, they guess, is the Tobelo. Basically, Maluku used to be one province and this area split off in 1999. There were many <coughs> factors, but for one, North Maluku was originally the center of the four largest Islamic sultanates in the Eastern Indonesian archipelago, known as the Four Mountains of Maluku, or Molo. Kiaraha. Later on, only two of them would remain, Tidore and Ternate. The larger city, Ternate, used to be the capital, but then they decided to move it to Sofifi to remain neutral between the two remaining sultanates. By the way, Ternate is the oldest continuously active sultanate in Indonesia. Today, the city of Sofifi is still being built and it has less than 5,000 people as of 2023, but they're, they're trying to, they're trying to 
get there. And finally, we reach the Papuas. Papua. Side note, this is the beginning of what constitutes geographic Melanesia as it connects to the other half of the island of the country of Papua New Guinea. This entire area was once an entire province itself up until it split into two provinces, Papua and West Papua, and then in 2022, it split into four more provinces. Traditionally, there are seven customary regions in this area, and some of the newer provinces kind of follow these borders more or less. Keep in mind, about half of all native Indonesian languages come from just Papua alone. Wow. It is home to some controversies that Indonesia is faced with due to some separatist movements from the Papuan people, and they've made calls for dialogue. Keep in mind, the sentiment is not for integration into Papua New Guinea, but rather a separate independent state for themselves. But we'll get into that later. Anyway, Southwest Papua, capital Sorong. There are 52 ethnic groups here. None of them are dominant. This area sits on the Dobarai or Bird's Head Peninsula of the Papuan Island, which was a why is it called Southwest when it looks like it's Northwest? Southwest would be down here. Customary region. And this province's name is a complete misnomer as it sits on the northwesternmost part of the okay. island, not the southwest, but it never okay. changes the name, which is confusing. Hey, these provinces so it wasn't change just their me. name and split every few years, so who knows, maybe it'll happen soon. I don't know, whatever, it's weird. In any case, historically this place used to be ruled by these four kings, and since there are too many languages, the lingua franca used here is usually Papuan Malay. There is a Christian majority here, and they're famous for the Raja Ampat National Park, which has these really cool sharp islands. Island that is amazing. The most biodiverse reef systems in all of Indonesia. It's really cool stuff. Next one, West Papua, capital Manokwari. West Papuan peoples make up the majority of the population. This is the Bomberai Peninsula. It was a customary region and uh, they broke off in 2022 and kept the name of the original province. This province is predominantly inhabited by about 60 West Papuan ethnic peoples, Christian majority at 63%. Famous for being the place that the nationalist sympathizers were exiled by the Dutch during the National Awakening movement in the 40s. They have their famous Kaki Seribu or Thousand Leg House and Doreri Bay which has over 20 former World War II sunken wreck wow. sites. And also a lot of you guys wanted me, he wanted me to mention that there's a town called Fak Fak here. I'm fuck, not fuck. cussing. That's just a name. <laughs> fuck, fuck. Central Papua. <laughs> Capital Nabire but the largest city is Tinika. Obviously Papuan peoples make up the largest group. They broke away from the Papua province in 2022. The one thing that makes this place famous is the Grassberg gold mines, one of the largest uh. reserves of gold and copper in the world. The area is about 88% Christian, mostly Protestant, and famous for hosting the tallest peak of Indonesia, Punjak Jaya, which is also Punjak the tallest Jaya. mountain on an island in the world, and even though near the equator, yes, it has snow on the peak. Lots of cool festivals, like the Baliam Valley Festival, showcasing traditional Papuan culture, and the Dani Tribe Pig Festival. Papua! Capital Jayapura, and of course, Papuan peoples make up the largest ethnic group. So basically, this is the province that used to be the center of the entire Papua province before it kept splitting up. The capital Jayapura also served as the capital to it and today it is the largest city in the entirety of Indonesian Papua. It's also the most developed and has the largest and busiest airport. It's also the site where the act of free choice was done in 1969 in which Western New Guinea was given a referendum to vote for integration into Indonesia or not by 1022 tribal representatives. In the end they voted for integration with Indonesia which angered some people that initiated the Free Papua Movement. It's a complicated story that doesn't have a simple answer, and I'm just saying this is where it went down. Highland Papua, capital Wamena. This is the only landlocked subdivision within Indonesia, following wow. more or less the customary region. I got the shaft. And it is one of the last regions in Indonesia to have native peoples to have documented contact with the outside world wow. in 1909. Many of my Indonesian subscribers have told me that this is kind of like the center of the separatist activity, clashes between rebels and Indonesian government officials slash military is not uncommon. Everybody knows it. Nonetheless, the people still hold fast to their culture and tradition. You can find those really cool thatched Dani houses in some rural parts of this area. Lots of festivals here as well. And finally, South Papua. Capital Merauke. This province roughly follows the customary region of Animha. It is the least populated province of Indonesia with only about half a million people. It is home to the largest wetland delta in Papua. Very swampy area wow. with some of the tallest stilt houses. 
Look at that. Papua. Some are just tree houses. The South Papuan people are well known for their wood carving. Oh, that's pretty. The Asmat tribe. Also, they are famous for the Zero Kilometer Monument, which is the easternmost point of Indonesia, as well as the Musa Mus Termite Mounds. They're super huge and they are famous for their agar wood industry. So that is it. Oh my God, that was a lot of promises. 38. <laughs> I, oh my God, I can't. Look, I love you guys. I love making these videos, but man, sometimes there's just so much information to put out there. But I promised you guys the Indonesians I would do this so cheers look Indonesia is a great place but this is the one this is the one problem I have with Indonesia there's 18,000 islands like how do you choose which one to go to like there's each one has a different crazy <coughs> cool thing going on and they have different languages and customs it's like ah! I don't know Indonesian subscribers I mean I only got to go to Batam city but what do you suggest I visit in Indonesia if I were to come back hmm hmm I agree. I, I have to say I'm going to have to watch this at least five more times. That has to be one of the most complicated geographies of a country that I have ever saw. I thought the United States was complicated, but that is extremely complicated. There was a lot of information very fast. Well, it was over 30 minutes. It wasn't super fast, but it was over 30 minutes. There's a lot going on, and it seems like, you know, there's new provinces popping up every year. Um, how do you feel about the new provinces? You know, is it a good thing, bad thing? You know, you get more local leadership, but is it really a good thing for the country? I don't know. You know, it's it's different for different countries. Um, let me know what province you're from, which ones you visited, what you think about them. Please uh, like and subscribe. Leave me any other comments you want to, any suggestions you have in the future. Please stay safe and be good. And also be kind. Goodbye.